Hello and welcome at our GCP Mindset channel. Today we speak about a very important topic about the new CITES, the uh, Clinical Trial Information System, which is relatively new, which has been implemented in 2022. And we have now found somebody was, who made already the first experience with the system, Anja Carstens. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, Anja, thank you very much for being here to speak with me about CITES. And we waited a long time for the new system. Yeah, uh, In Germany, we made already jokes about it. It's very similar to the airport in Berlin, uh, much delayed and very expensive. And now it's, um, it's available. And in 2023, we even need to do it. Yeah, we don't have a, ch a choice anymore. And you made already the first experience. Yeah, but, but before you speak about your experience with CITES, please tell me a little bit more about your history, your experience in general, your job. Yeah, thanks again for having me here, for inviting me to this interview. My name is Anja Carstens. I am a biologist and a master of drug regulatory affairs. And I've been working for different pharmaceutical industries in the past, in the late 20 years. And uh, I've also gained some experience uh, with clinical trials recently with the CTIS system. Cool. Yeah, and when uh, things are delayed and the developer need a long time, longer than expected, we could expect that the system is very good. Yeah. What, what would you say? Is it a good result? Um, I would say the system or the, pros, the whole process has some good advantages. However, there are also some technical issues, still some technical issues that need to be solved first in order to get a smooth process. Okay, Anja, um, in 2022, we still had the choice to use the old system or the new system. Um, a lot of my clients actually decided to use the old system they knew better. You decided to change already. Why? Yeah, why have you decided in that way? Well, first of all, as you already explained, the system is mandatory from February on, so we have to get used to this to the new system. And um, I was very um, excited about the system to get to know to it and to be ready, honestly, to make the first experience, to get the SOPs ready, to understand the system and to have the templates available, etc. Yeah. Okay. What is, was the studies which change now, which need to be transferred into the new system? Mm. Can you explain how that works? Yeah. First of all, um, you have to make sure that um, you have an aligned protocol because under the new system, you have to transfer all the documents into the CTIS and you have to get another approval. Although your trial is already approved, it will be... Um, Uh, examined against the clinical trial regulation and you have to make sure that you have a protocol that is aligned with all the the countries that are involved and then you transfer it and then you have to apply for it and then uh, the same um, procedure timelines as for an initial application basically apply okay then you need to submit twice first to harmonize everything and then once again to get it into the CETAS system Yeah, the harmonization you would, uh, in best case, do under the old system. Yeah. And then once you have a harmonized protocol, then you go and switch into the new system. Okay. But if not every country agrees with the harmonized protocol, you could also exclude countries then during a running project. It, it might happen that, that you have the case that one country uh, disagrees, uh, then uh, that you, you might uh, yeah, need to quit that country. It. What was the main challenge for you uh, compared to the old system? I would say um, one thing I had to struggle with is uh, the publication of the documents. So basically you're dealing with a double amount of documents, one set not for publication and another set for publication. And there you have to make reductions. Uh, because you have to remove commercially confident information as well as any personal data from these documents. And you have to upload all these documents and you have to assign metadata to these documents. So this is uh, quite a lot of work and you have to have a process in-house here, especially for the reductions. Okay. 
Yeah. But do you get support somehow? Is there a help desk? Yes, there is a possibility to ask a EMA help desk in case of technical issues. And we use this quite often and uh, they are quite responsive. So uh, this is this is good. But you are facing you or you will be facing technical issues when you do the application. We had, for instance, uh, problems with uploading documents or downloading or with the uh, with the link to the OMS database or um, yeah, we even by accident um, deleted a whole clinical trial uh, and had to yeah, fix it. Yeah, a nightmare really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but these guys at the help desk are technical stuff. It's no EMA stuff. It's it's uh, EMA stuff, but uh, they are they can, they only help for technical issues. Okay, but you cannot call them when you have a regulatory question. No, no. Which reporting member state did the sponsor choose for your study? Well, in this case, uh, there were two countries involved: uh, Germany and France, and the sponsor took Germany as reporting member state. Okay, what would you say? Is it was it a good choice? Well. I think, yeah, it, it worked okay so far, so we cannot compare. Um, however, what uh, we are facing right now is that the approval will be delayed, and this is due to the winter clock stop that the CTIS system has in place. Okay, that's also a very new EU process. Right, we, we didn't have that in the past under the directive, but uh, now there is... Um, two and a half weeks winter clock stop okay. during Christmas time. Okay, unbelievable. But we need to take it as it is. Imagine Ema would call you, you know, somebody from the help desk or somebody who makes decisions there and ask you, how would you improve CITES? You know, what would be your feedback? Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is um, regarding notifications, because currently you do not get email notifications out of the system. So you have to go actively into the system, see if there is a status change or if you have any requests for information. And uh, we do it twice daily because the um, the date to respond to the questions is uh, very short, only 10 days during validation and 12 days during the assessment phase. So you don't want to lose one day by not logging into the system. And that would be good help if the system could send email notifications. Yeah, which would be the most normal thing nowadays with social media. I would think that should be technically possible, yes, but I'm not an expert. Okay, the system is now available for, um, I think, eight, nine months. And I can imagine that the processes don't work perfectly yet. Uh, do you get any updates or do they change processes still? Are they in the evaluation phase? What's the best process? Yes, it's my impression that they are constantly working on the system. And um, when you have an uh, EMA account, you get uh, newsletters and then you get the information if something has changed in the system. So the latest update that I received is that um, the sites on third parties that are involved in a trial, they don't need to be registered in the OMS database anymore, but the applicant can uh, insert those um, addresses and uh, site names into the CTIS system directly. So that's that's a change and a good thing. Okay, that means that you, for example, as a CRO, can do the registrations on behalf of study sites, vendors, labs, and so on. May maybe also on behalf of a sponsor? For um, sites and third parties and laboratories that need to be registered, um, you can do it uh, on your own within the CTIS system. Um, so we can do it for them. Yes, we yeah. can do it. We for as them. a CRO. Yeah. yeah. As, as soon as the information is available, this site is going to take part in it. Then uh, I can go into the CTIS system and uh, transfer the data into the system. Cool. However, for the uh, sponsorship or for yeah, if a sponsor wants to 
initiate the trial, then the sponsor needs to register themselves, uh, set up the trial, get the university number, and then assign roles. And that can be done within the company or outside the company. Everyone who has an EMA account can uh, get a role. It can be a preparation role, a submitting role, whatsoever, part one, part two, and then can, uh, can work. As you probably know, uh, people in our business are usually old fashioned. Yeah, they don't like the new systems. What would you recommend to people who really still want to, I mean, one week prior to, to 2023, um, do the submission according to the old processes? Well, as um, from February onwards, um, the authorities wouldn't accept any applications under the old directive. If you have everything available for a study now, every document is available and you already know that this will be a short study not running uh, beyond uh, 2025 and you maybe only have one country involved and you don't want to go with the new system, then if you hurry up, maybe then uh, you can still go under the old directive. However, for every study that you already know that will be running any longer or you will have several countries involved, I would go with the new CTIS system. Okay. And what would be your recommendations in terms of transferring running studies into the new system? Yeah, that's also uh, a point. If you already know that your study will be running uh, longer than 2025, um, then you need to transfer um, because this is it's a cutoff date, February 2025, and you need to, to have your study transferred. And um, this will be just as a new initial application and you have your you have to stick to the timelines and uh, you should start soon with transferring the trials. Yeah. But according to my understanding, if you want to add countries for example in your project you, you you must go the new way yes exactly because under the old directive you were able to nationally add new countries but uh, under the new system it's uh, a known process you have to add member states to a running country and for that so if you're if your trial is running under the old directive and you want to add another member state you have to switch to CTIS first and then you can add the member state. Okay. For me, it sounds actually very complicated. It, it also sounds very slow, the, the whole process. And um, coming back to the first question, do you really think that the new CTIS system is better than the old system? What would you say? Well, I would think the system has some advantages. So first, the first thing is that you apply only in one portal. You only have one cover letter and you cover every involved competent authority and every ethics committee with one application. That's the good thing. Um, but it also has some disadvantages um, because we only have limited time to respond to questions raised only the 12 days in the assessment phase, including weekends and public holidays. And regarding the timelines, I wouldn't think that it's quicker than before. I, I would think, depending on the country, the same or even longer. Okay. Imagine somebody wants to do the application by themselves with a new system. What would be your three most important recommendations for such a person? Yeah, well, in order not to lose too much time when you want to start the trial, I would think uh, you have to make sure, first of all, that your IMP is registered in the UJA Vigilance database because you can only make reference uh, to this database in CTIS. So you have to register first and then you can start the trial. Um, another thing is regarding the de reducted versions. So you ha should have a process in place uh, that uh, you know what is confidential information, what needs to be redacted. And uh, uh, yeah, and to have people to help you working with this. And the third thing is um, 
please go to the EMA list of issues, of technical issues first and read them carefully in order to avoid any technical issues. Yes, thank you very much, Anja. It was really interesting, even so uh, it's not only good news, I would say. <laughs> uh, it, it's slower. Uh, we don't speed up the process of getting the approval, which is probably also a disadvantage compared to the US and Asian countries. Uh, but yeah, we can't change it. We need to live with a new system. And yeah, thank you very much for your, your experience or sharing the experience with us. Uh, I would we, or suggest that we make next year once again uh, an interview. Uh, after one year experience, yeah, then you also got some approvals, uh, you transferred studies into the system, and then we can share experience with that as well. Yeah, I would love to do so. Yeah. Thank you very much, and I hope you liked our video and found it interesting. Please leave your messages and subscribe our channel. Bye-bye.